Now let's begin with our next experiment or our next uh, or the first protocol that we want to discuss, and that that protocol is uh, called teleportation. Now, why you might be familiar with this term teleportation, but why are we even talking about it, or what makes it so relevant to quantum computing? Now, in classical computers, the art of copying is 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 very easy. You're you're always copying uh, files within your computer, within your laptops, within your phone, or you're co copying files from your local laptop to some cloud, or you're doing, uh, you know, you're copying within clouds, within different, uh, you know, public and private clouds or in a hybrid cloud setting. And that is seamless, right? We don't even care or we don't even notice that we are copying so much stuff or uh, pasting so much stuff here and there. But in quantum computation, it is not possible to have an exact copy of an unknown quantum state. This is the no cloning theorem that you studied in week one. However, uh, you know, there, there are ways to do communications. It's not like that's the end of quantum communication. There are ways to do it. And that's the reason why we call teleportation and not co quantum co copying. Right. So it is it is not like it is uh, being copied, but there is there is a way by using an entangled qubit and a few classical registers that we can actually teleport information from one qubit to the other. So we are not actually transporting or transferring a qubit from one location to the other. We are just teleporting the information which was previously being held by one qubit to another qubit and we are doing it by by leveraging an additional qubit which is creating an entangled pair and a couple of classical bit, bits that are holding the measurement results and once this information is teleported from one place to the other from one qubit to the other the first qubit now no more has the information so that's that's kind of in a nutshell about quantum teleportation you'll also study in detail the math behind quantum teleportation but let's try to give an example and, and understand what we are trying to look at now suppose a person alice wants to send a qubit state uh, from uh, from a, from alice to a person bob now let's let's be particular and call out this particular qubit state as psi and psi is equal to alpha times uh, state 0 and beta times state 1. So precisely you want to pass the information about alpha and beta to Bob. And how would you do it? As I mentioned, we need to use an entangled qubit pair. So we need a third party. So Alice gets in a friend, Telemon, and asks Telemon to create an entangled pair. And then Alice can perform some computation at her end or some, some kind of operations at her end. And then, you know, uh, send this, uh, this uh, results over a classical communication channel to Bob. And then Bob has to perform some classical computation on his end to receive the information. And once Bob receives the information, Alice no longer holds that information. Now let's let's step by step go and create this kind of a circuit and see what we have. In order to uh, you know uh, there are multiple quantum teleportation circuit and I'll also show you in the in the book in the Arkeski textbook the circuit is, the full circuit is there with with full explanation so you can directly use it from there. I'll also be sharing the Jupyter notebooks that I have created for this class. So that you have access to all of them in your uh, in your lab sessions. Now, th this is this is a this is a circuit that I had uh, pre predefined and pre created for you guys. So we'll we'll be running this circuit one by one cell at a time, trying to understand what are the different things that are there in this cell. So as usual, whenever you create a new file, there are a couple of imports, but I have a few extra import sentences that I have done here. And since I've used the Qiskit textbook, so I've used some tools from Qiskit textbook. And one of the tools that I've imported from here is a function called random state. And I'll, I'll, I'll come to that where you need to use random state. It is not always info, Im, Im, important. But as we said that Alice wants to send this, in, this, this information of a qubit, which is psi, and we wanted to generate psi randomly. So you might want to say that, okay, you might, might want to simplify this, uh, this program and you want to say, okay, Alice wants to send the input zero from Alice to Bob. So all you do is having the same circuit and because these circuits are initialized at zero,
messages, you directly do the teleportation circuit and that's done. If I said that Alice had to uh, trans uh, teleport the information one from Alice to Bob, all you do is apply a NOT gate after uh, Q0 and then you, you re the remaining is the same old quantum teleportation circuit. So at Q0, the state was 0 initially. After a NOT gate, the state becomes 1. And then, you, then your teleportation circuit enables you to pass on this information 0 from Alice to Bob. So, so there are a couple of things that we are going to do here apart from getting all the block vector histogram uh, that, we, that we got earlier. We are also taking the quantum circuit, some classical register and some quantum registers. Now let's run this particular cell and then let's try to set up our quantum circuit. So here we are trying to set up uh, or create a quantum circuit with three qubits and two classical bits and two classical bits that we have are two different registers here. So we take a classical register and we give it a name of CRZ. We take another classical register and give it a name of CRX. Now, that, that, that's what creates our teleportation circuit. So we say teleportation circuit of three uh, quantum registers and two classical registers. Now, we, let's, let's run and create our quantum circuit. Now, there are a couple of functions that we create here. As I mentioned that, you know, I'm trying to leverage entanglement as a principle here, which we have already studied in our uh, past sessions. And even in this session, we just did a code, our experiment five on uh, entanglement. So now we are very well aware of how to entangle. So you just do two, op gate, two gates uh, you apply. One of them is applying superposition using Hadamard gate. The other is applying C0 gate and you are entangling the two uh, qubits. So all you do is you create a function uh, calling it out as create bell pair or you can call it as entanglement creation or whatever you want to. But you pass a quantum circuit and you pass the two qubit numbers that you want to really work upon. And here I say that, okay, I want to put this qubit A into a state positive and uh, there is, there is uh, from, from state 0, I'm, I'm putting them into state positive or state, uh, or, or state negative. And now we, what we do here is we call create bell pair and we pass on our quantum teleportation circuit. We also pass our qubits 1 and 2. Now, we pass qubit 1 and 2, uh, you know, uh, assuming that this particular friend of Alice Telamon has to entangle these two qubits, qubit 1 and 2. The reason being that Alice plans to send the information being held out by Q0. Now, let's say Alice uh, and, and Bob have Q1 and Q2 after their part away. Right. So once you have this, you can just write teleportation circuit draw. And that's how you create this circuit. So you see that Q1 and Q2, that's the information that you passed in here when you asked uh, to create a bell pair. So you said that, okay, on, on one, which is A here in this function, you create a Hadamard gate. So you see the Hadamard gate on Q1, which sets Q1 uh, to superposition. And then you say QC, QC dot CX on A and B, which is 1 and 2. So 1 should be the source and 2 should be the target. So you have a C0 gate with Q1 as source and Q2 as target. And this is how the circuit is drawn. Now, let's say, because we are assuming Alice is owning uh, Q1 and Bob is owning Q2 one, once they are far apart. So, we will try to create uh, two, two gates. We are trying actually to do apply C0 on Q1, controlled on Q0, and then a Hadamard on Q0, because we want to transfer the state psi, which is in Q0 because Alice is trying to transfer the state psi. So in terms of Alice gates or in terms of what Alice is having, uh, so Alice has only the, uh, the Q0 uh, access to Q0 and Q1. So uh, this is how we create an Alice gate. Now, we apply this Alice, Alice gate on our tele teleportation circuit and because Alice owns the gate, uh, the qubits Q0 and Q1, we pass on the qubits Q0 and Q1. So here you have the value of Q0, which is psi, and here you have uh, Q1, which is A. So first you create a control knot, which uh, you see this it, it is from Q0 to Q1. Uh, and then you have a Hadamard on Q0. So this is this is what you do in your teleportation circuit. Now at this point of time, we can do a couple of things. 
apply these alice gates and uh, and then you know alice can apply alice can do some measurement on both the qubit that she owns so she owns q0 and q1 so let her do some measurement on q0 and q1 so we create a function for measure and send and we say that okay pass on the quantum circuit here and the two qubits which you want to measure now we create a barrier so barrier there are there are two um, main uh, significance of adding a barrier for for here you would see that okay barrier actually neatly separates out the circuit that's true but barrier also indicates to the compiler not to do any optimization at that point of time so you do optimizations here you do optimization here and if there was no circuit and uh, no no barrier in that entire circuit it would do an optimization or for on on top of the entire circuit so, so you added a barrier and then you said, I want to measure is a comma zero. So you basically, whatever is your uh, a, you say a comma zero is your measurement. So a will be measured on the classical register zero and b will be measured on the classical register one. And a and b are the qubit information or the qubit numbers that you are passing in. So here in the next step, we pass in measure and uh, to the measure and send function, the teleportation circuit. And then we pass in that, okay, Alice has these two uh, uh, qubits, qubit 0 and qubit 1, which Alice wants to measure and store them in classical register because she wants to leverage classical com co communication channels to send these two bits to Bob. So at this point of time, you see this is the, this is the teleportation circuit. And then what you do is, in, in order for Bob to be able to receive this information, Bob has to apply a couple of different gates. Now, depending on the state of the classical bits, and it could be 0, 0 in, in, in case of 0, 0, Bob doesn't even have to apply in gate. If it is 0, 1, then Bob has to apply an X gate. If it is 1, 0, then Bob has to apply a Z gate. But if it is 1, 1, then Bob applies a ZX gate. So here, depending on that, you, we create uh, a couple of, uh, you know, uh, a, a couple of logics that when you apply an X gate or when you apply a Z gate, and we, we give this information in a function called Bob gates because Bob has to perform these kind of computation in order to be able to receive the information that Alice has sent. Now, uh, let's let's just try to apply Bob uh, onto the function Bob gates our teleportation circuit. And then we say, okay, which are the ones? So, uh, which is the qubit that you really have to deal with? So, we wanted initially, we said that we are sending the information from qubit Q0 to Q2, right? So, we, we know that Q2 is the one that Bob has and and if you remember we we actually talked about this that you know when they part ways when alice and alice and bob parted ways alice had q1 and bob had q2 so q2 is the is the qubit that bob is concerned about so in bob gates we pass q2 and then we pass the two classical registers in which alice has posted all the information now we draw the circuit and this this also you can assume as a complete uh, uh, quantum teleportation circuit now let's let's try to test this protocol whether we have been actually now once this 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 is these classical operations are being done by bob does he actually receive the uh, receive the information or receive the state psi Right. So in order to uh, in order to create this uh, this our, 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 our create this state psi, we are just using a random one qubit state. So let's let's call the function random state, and we are asking it to give us a random state, and then we want to display this particular random state. So this is the random state psi, and these are the values of the random state. So you see this ra random state is also plotted in your block sphere. So from it starts from the uh, the equ uh, equator, or uh, and it uh, and it ends up somewhere in the middle so it is it is a superposition of the state 0 and 1 and you see you see the values of the superposition here in the state vector results as well now what what we do next is we have the initial state of zero so we need to convert an initial because because if you remember even in circuit composer we showed you that all the qubits that are there are initialized to state zero so the first step that we do in here is we have to convert the state zero to state psi 
Now we use uh, an operator called initialize and and uh, and uh, let let me just reiterate this is an operator and not a gate. You can call it as an operation, um, but this is not a qubit gate. So qubit gates are reversible as as you studied in your um, week one lectures that each qubit gates, be it single qubit gates or multiple qubit gates, they have this uh, property of reversible of being reversible and operators are not reversible operators for example measurement like you did qc dot measure or you dragged and dropped the measurements uh, operator on your um, uh, circuit composer these are operations and operations are not reversible so what we do is we say that okay initialize is, is an operation operator and then we are saying that okay psi is is something that we are computing randomly and that's how we uh, we do uh, we do an operation called init now this is our uh, state now this is our code uh, the entire code so so uh, these are these are these are the snippets that we have run in our previous jupyter notebook but i have just put them all together to give you guys an overview of what we are trying to do the first step is to create a circuit we created a circuit with three quantum registers and two different classical registers and that's how we create this quantum circuit now we say in this quantum circuit let me append uh, and create an init gate. So even if it was in the state zero, now you have to convert and initialize this qubit Q0 into the state psi. Now, after uh, after it is uh, created into the state psi, you 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 call your friend Telemon and ask them to create an entangled qubit pair. So Telemon comes into picture, entangles qubit one and qubit two, and then you draw a barrier here. So you tell your circuit compiler that don't do any optimization when I am at the barrier. And then you have the Alice gate. So Alice has control over qubit zero and qubit one. It is Alice is going to have qubit one even when Alice and Bob are far apart. So uh, what Alice does is Alice uh, measures and sends uh, the information to the classical register. So Alice measures zero and Alice measures one. And then Bob does some compute. So Bob also has a function called Bob gates. Bob does the compute on qubit two and uh, actually takes in the information from these two classical registers. Now we want to draw the circuit and see how the circuit actually looks like. So because we wanted the state psi, so this was the state psi if you remember. So now our Q0 which was 0 initially, it has been uh, made, so it, 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 it moved its state from 0 to the state psi and then you applied a Hadamard on, on Q1 which led uh, Q1 into the superposition, Q1 and Q2 got entangled and then you pass in this entanglement information uh, with uh, Q0. So you, there is never an interaction between Q1, uh, Q0 and Q2, but this information that uh, Q0 was holding that somehow got sent into uh, our, our C2, which is uh, the classical uh, component for Q2. Now, how do we really run these circuits? Now, we can run these circuits on uh, different simulators. So, uh, so just just to test this uh, circuit, you can actually uh, run it on uh, the state vector simulator or the air simulator, and also run it on and and check the uh, check on, on on a block vector. So, you are asking it to get the, get the simulator, and then you run it on a simulator. The same kind of uh, uh, I mean. I mean the same kind of commands that I used in for uh, the last two codes where I typed in the, the result command you say that get the dot result dot get state vector so the same uh, way to write so you should be okay with the syntax and anyways I'm going to share all the scripts and I'm going to show you there are other Python notebooks that are available in the Qiskit textbook as well. So now we ask uh, in, in the same way that we coded in our experiment 6 plot block multi vector and then we uh, pass it the out vector and now you can see these results. So you see that these qubits, uh, and even if you want to run these circuits multiple times, so uh, we, we last ran this particular circuit. So let's just test this protocol. So we'll We'll run this circuit and we'll see that, okay, the psi is now because it's a random number generator. So it generates a, a different number and you have a different value of psi. 
and uh, now let's try to see how to create an init gate and then let's try to run this full circuit and see how do we how does this uh, circuit get created so if you see there because the random number generator had a different value of psi uh, you got a different value of psi in this particular circuit and and the remaining part of the quantum teleportation circuit remains as is now let's run it on a simulator and try to plot the block vector and this is what we see right so if you if you know the 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 key thing to notice here is and, and you can run it multiple number of times there so that multiple number of times you you run it and you get different values of psi and what you want to observe here is the value of psi that you got here this is the value that was being held by q0 and your most important task or where, where you started this problem of teleportation was the state psi is with qubit 0 uh, or q0 and you wanted to teleport it to qubit 2 so our our key finding on what we want to see or how we want to test the protocol is we want to see that this particular thing of qubit 0 if you can read this is qubit 0 this we want to see that this this should be transferred to qubit 2 now once we run this circuit on on our simulator we see qubit 0 is now in state 0 qubit 1 is now in state 0 but qubit 2 is exactly in this state psi and and just in order to uh, you know assure you guys of the results so let's let's go back and let's try to run with a different value of psi again and let's see what kind of psi value we get okay we see uh, another value of psi although on the same um, axis so we want to run the initial uh, initialization and we want to run the entire code again and now you see that okay it uh, initialized the initial value 0 got converted into this init by this init function and and then the remaining circuit again remains similar and the state vector results uh, should should reflect so you see that the qubit 2 got the exact information that was being held by qubit 0 so that's the kind of the protocol that we we talked about in quantum teleportation and we have actually run it on a simulator but there are a couple more things that i want to uh, i want to give you, give it to you guys in in um, in in very uh, not not in a lot of detail um, but let's let's just go over them in terms of how it looks when you uh, when you do this kind of teleportation simulation or teleportation in an actual hardware so okay to select the circuit so i have to select this particular circuit the circuit is selected and now let me run it and you see the exact so you can run it as many number of times and you will still see an exact computation now let's try to use a Carson simulator and there is a difference uh, here. So on a real uh, quantum computer, we'll not be able to sample the state vectors, right? So if you want to check our teleportation circuit is working or not, you need to really do things slightly differently. And that's that's what I'm going to try to show you. And that's why I, I was using different kinds of simulators to give you an idea of what, are, what we can do in each of the simulators. So now that we're choosing a different simulator, uh, we, we have a slight different way of doing it. So the initialize instruction that you used uh, performs uh, first a reset. So it sets our uh, qubit into the state zero. It then applies uh, certain gates to turn your qubit zero to into, into the state psi. Now you can see an init and inverse init uh, function and, and, and let's just run and show you. Uh, so this is the same code. So this is just, just the same code and I've, I'll, I'll just uh, run it with inverse and um, in inverse init gate. So now what you see here is the same state psi that you had in the previous random generator. And you see the same state psi and this is called init, but then you see something called a disentangler. Disentangler is this function which we called inverse init gate. So we just had an additional step in this particular code while running it on custom simulator. So there is just one extra line that you need to do, which is a disentangler or an inverse init gate. Now this, uh, you know, this will help us. And and now next we should just measure the third qubit and store it in the third uh, classical bit. So let's let's bring out a classical register. Let's measure this and put it in here. 
and and we want to put a measurement and want to see what is the value in, into c1 now uh, uh, let's let's also try to do a histogram in order to be able to understand so there you you see the results right so expected uh, so the way i asked you to read even in, in circuit composer when we were focusing on these three bits the way we read in qiskit is q2 q1 q0 q2 q1 q0 q2 q1 q0 q2 q1 q0 so you see all of q2 holds the value 0 so that's what we meant that you know our q2 has the initial state uh, zero that we were having so that's the expected result and thus we can say that teleportation worked properly now we have still been running these two on two different simulators we have not yet run it on an actual hardware so let's look at the way we can run it on an ibm hardware now when we want to run it on an ibm hardware as you would have expected by now we really need to do some differences again now uh, the difference here is ibm quantum computers currently do not support instructions after measurement meaning we cannot run the quantum teleportation circuit in the current form that we have. So we have this measurement operations right in between the circuit. So we really can't do it and run it on a real hardware. But there is a way out. If there was, uh, you know, copying uh, mechanism was not allowed in quantum computers, but you found out a way and we created teleportation. So there is a way that, uh, um, you know, you can have measurements. Right. So there is something called a deferred measurement principle, which states that any measurement can be postponed until the end of the circuit. So now we can know that, OK, we can move these measurements to the end and we should see the same results. Now, let's try to do that. So uh, you see what the, the only difference we'll do is in the Bob gate. So Bob gate, Bob was applying these transformation or these operations after uh, Alice had measured and passed uh, through a classical communication channel, right? Now we wanted to change these Bob gates and the remaining part of the circuit remains pretty similar. So you do have the extra step of appending in, in, in invert gate, uh, in, in, in inverse init gate, which you did it in the CASM simulator as well. And after that, you have the measurement operation. So let's just try to draw this circuit and see what kind of circuit it creates. So it has a qubit zero, which got initialized to a state psi, which was the random number generator. Then the trans teleportation circuit uh, remains the same, but we have two measurement operations here, which we have now deferred. So this is called the deferred measurement principle. We still do have the disentangler or the inverse init gate, and we do the measurement after the disentangler. Now, now, just to just to mention a cup, uh, one more pointer here is um, any benefits of measuring early um, is is generally hardware related. If we can measure early, then we might be able to reuse the qubits, right, or or uh, reduce the amount of time our qubits are in their uh, fragile superposition. But in this example, the early measurement in this uh, quantum teleportation circuit would have allowed us to transmit a qubit state without a direct quantum communication channel, right? So we were measuring and then we were using a classical communication channel to transmit this particular qubit. Versus what uh, you know, what what we are trying to do here is while moving the gates, uh, we are allowing to demonstrate this teleportation on a real hardware. So it should be it should be noted here that the benefit of this teleportation process, like you know, transferring quantum states via classical channels, that is getting lost at the expense of being able to run it on a real hardware. There is uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out here that is, you know, uh, in the in the in, in experiment five today we we saw that we can uh, we have, if we say provider dot get backends we can list in all the backends that we have access to and we saw that okay IBM Q Bellm was one of them and we just randomly chose IBM Q Bellm without knowing what are the total number of pending jobs in IBM Q Bellm and how much time we'll have to wait for that so that was not the best uh, you know a way of programming uh, it, it could be a good practice when you are on a ui where you can see everything and choose choose but uh, it, it is it is sort of in hindsight i don't even know how long i would have to wait if i if i choose a wrong machine right so so there is a way there's a better and an intelligent way to do it 
So first we load this account and, uh, and get the provider similar to uh, what we were doing in our last code. So we're asking provider that give me a get, get me a provider from this hub, which is IBM Q. So let's, let's just run this particular cell and then this is this is a very important code that i echo or, or just one important uh, command line that i wanted to emphasize on that from qiskit providers.ibmq we are uh, importing something called least pc and that's the one that we are going to use along with that we also need something called job monitor because we want to really get the job status how much time do we have to wait what is the, the queue status and, and so on so we get this from the Qiskit Tools Monitor uh, library. Now let's call out a backend. Uh, uh, the same things that we do, did, we were asking for a backend. We are again asking for a backend, but we are saying we are calling that to least busy. So we least busy is a function who looks and uh, looks at the list of uh, the compile uh, the the hardware that is that is available. So the same way we ask providers backend. So least busy now goes to providers and asks for backends. Ask for what are the different backends that you have. What are the number? What is the number of qubits? And you can mention the number of qubits. So I said, I need a machine which has at least, you know, three qubits. Even if it is a five qubit machine, I'm okay. Or even if it is uh, more than that, I'm okay. But given the machines that I have access to, at least a three qubit machine. I don't want to work on a one qubit machine. So I, I can specify the number here. You can you can put a five or or some other number as you as you would have access to. And then I, I, I said that I don't want a simulator and I want the, the operation uh, status to be true. Now, with that, I wanted to transpile my quantum circuit into this particular backend with a certain optimization level. And I'm leaving these optimization level uh, and transpilation details uh, out for from week one, uh, from week two. And if you want to read more about it, you can uh, you can read more about it. And I'll, I'll leave pointers and, and places where you can read about it. But what we are interested in doing is we just wanted to run this particular transpiled circuit. So we say that, okay, just run this transpiled circuit on my packet. And this is a job that I have created and I want to, this job to be monitored. Now, whenever I run this, it says that, okay, there is a there is a job that is already running. And then I'm going to wait for this job. It is going to give me the status of this job. It's going to say that, okay, the job is being validated. Then the job would be in queue. And then uh, it is in queue and there are two jobs before it. So that, so I know that, okay, the, this particular machine, whatever machine it chose, this, this machine has two jobs before it. So this is the amount of time that it would take to generate the results. Now, once uh, now you see it, it constantly gets updated. So right now it is, uh, it is, it is still in queue, but there is one pending job that that the machine has to complete, and then it would come down to this. Meanwhile, if you want, this particular job is actively running. So if you want, you can just run this uh, the next cell. And in the next cell, the thing, the the things that we do is uh, are are pretty much simple and straightforward to what we had done in our previous circuit. So we want to get the result. So we ask dot result and then we save the dot result in an experiment result uh, variable and then we say that okay from the experiment result variable get me the counts for the for the circuit in consideration which is qc so let's let's just run this particular circuit we want to print, print the counts and we also wanted to plot the histogram so our our counts is it is in the state 0 9, 85 times that is what we expected. So we wanted Q2 or qubit uh, 2 to be in the state 0. And we wanted uh, the, the qubit 2 to be in state 1 as 0 times. But when we are running into an actual hardware, we don't see that 100% times. And that's that's the noise that we saw even in the circuit composer tutorials that there is a there is a very minimal but a, 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 a noise that is still uh, we have to attribute for when we are tra trying to run in our actual hardware now this particular error rate also is something that you can come uh, calculate and you see that the error rate here is point zero three eight percent so this is all about uh, the circuit or or uh, the protocol quantum teleportation and in the next uh, lecture series, in the next week's lecture, we are going to learn more about uh, the different algorithms that uh, that are there. Um, and we are going to learn about the bernstein Vazirani and the Deutsch-Josa and the Grover's algorithm in our uh, next lecture. 
so um, the key things to remember from this is that you know Qiskit is an uh, uh, using Jupyter notebooks it's a pythonic interface you can just run one cell at a time you can also download this entire code and run it uh, run the run the codes you can share the codes you can have these visualizations you can save these visualizations you can copy it share uh, share it and and create your reports you can write th these things on a LaTeX as well uh, and if you go down to the lab docs and tutorials so here you can actually see uh, uh, the lab jobs the lab docs here if you go down to here you can actually uh, get find a link to uh, the Qiskit uh, textbook you can also see all the other documentation the YouTube channel the Qiskit tutorials that I was mentioning Qiskit tutorials is a particularly interesting one if if uh, people are interested in learning more about advanced circuits about high performance simulators and as I mentioned there is a lot of details about um, you know quantum algorithms quantum optimization uh, chemistry application finance application and of course quantum machine learning so this is a one-stop uh, place where you can get all of these uh, and more you can also look at the lab jobs that you have run today there are so many lab jobs that we run on different uh, hardware and um, different simulators so there is a list of all the jobs and you can just go to these jobs and analyze them more and you can you can just find out so this is the last circuit that you ran the quantum teleportation circuit you ran on on a hardware which you don't even know which hardware because your code Qiskit automatically found you the least busy hardware at that time so that that particular hardware was IBM Lima and you can get in all the details if you want so uh, it was in queue for 29 seconds and and the validating time was 80, 876 milliseconds. And then you, the total running time for the circuit was 8.4 seconds. So you called, you put these instructions and these instructions from your local uh, via IBM cloud was put into this hardware. And then the all the computation was done in the quantum computer. And then you got the results and the results were transferred back via IBM cloud to your, uh, your machine. And you can see the results. So all of that took a total time of 8.4 seconds and and as expected you see the histogram results as well so this is all for today and uh, see you next week with quantum algorithms thank you